Okay, so where we left off last week, uh, we ended with these with basic matches here, and we kind of ended with with this section right here, and now we're picking up with anchors. So by default, when you uh, regular expressions will match anywhere in the string, but if you want to match the beginning or the end of a string, then you can anchor the regular expression. So here is regularly how it works. Here we're doing a basic match and we're searching for A within this vector. So it'll pull out the first A um, anywhere within the string. And notice that the first A in each string is the only one that is matched. If we wanna search for all of the A's, stir view all is required. So that will, if we did stir view all, and we'll see some examples of that in a, in, later on, that will pick all of the A's. So it would pick this A and this A, but stir view just picks the first one and it's anywhere in the word. So um, right here is where we're, the following matches only begin, uh, the following matches only the beginning of the string where the A shows up. So here we have that same vector and we're anchoring this A to the front with this little symbol right here. Um, it's the power symbol or the caret and that anchor, and it comes before the character, before the word you're trying to match. And that will match anything, any A that is at just the beginning of the word. So it's fairly straightforward. And then the opposite of that, if we wanna anchor something to the end, we use the dollar sign after the character that we're trying to match. So in this case, it'll match the last A. And I noticed with anchors, it's the beginning or the end of the entire string. So we'll see this a little bit later on too, but in the, these are pretty simple because each string is just one word. When it's a sentence, it'll, you, it'll match the beginning of the sentence or the end of the sentence, not each individual word. So this is a mnemonic. I don't really know how much I, <laughs> I like it, but so to remember which pattern to use, remember the mnemonic. If you begin with power, the power sign, you end up with money, the money sign. So I, I tend to call this the carrot. So I'll probably be re referring to that as carrot throughout the, uh, throughout the lesson. So um, here's an example of where there are multiple words in each string in this vector, and we're just trying to match apple. So it'll just match the entire word apple. And this is a basic match. So here we're anchoring apple to the beginning and the end, meaning it has to be the first word and the last word. So I tried to trick it here by putting in apple, apple. I put in this one myself just to see if it would if it would pick it, but it, it does not pick apple, apple. It only matches the single word when it's anchored, anchored to the beginning and the end. So for the exercises, this one is, this one's pretty straightforward. How would you match the literal string? It's trying to trick us because it's using just anchors. It's using three anchors, but we wanna use them literally. And these are fairly simple. So we're just double escaping each one. So the, um, I put in this kind of fake vector right here with these, these terms, this doesn't even mean anything, but it has the, it has this, the search, term that we're looking for within the string. So our string for the regular expression is just gonna be this. We're double escaping the dollar sign to use it literally, double escaping the caret, and double escaping the dollar sign. So that's what it will match. So for the following examples, uh, several examples, we're gonna be using the words data set that's just part of uh, the string R package. And it's just a list of a whole bunch of different words. So uh, for this exercise, we'll just, uh, it's asking us to find words that start with Y. Pretty, pretty straightforward. We'll do use the stir view function so we can view it like this. It's a nice way to look at it. And uh, we'll pull that words data set and we'll match starts with a Y. So caret Y. And I just put match in here because with stir view, if you don't put match in, it'll list all of the words, even the words that it doesn't match. So this, whenever you see this match true in here is just put in there so um, we're not blowing out the whole screen with, with examples here. So um, another opposite example, we're ending, we're gonna use the end anchor. So 
words that end with X from that same data set, and we just put the dollar sign after the X. So also notice that it's that's fairly intuitive, but the uh, when we're anchoring something at the beginning of the word, the caret comes before the before the match, and when we're anchoring something to the end, it comes after. So here, uh, we're trying to find a word that's exactly three letters long. Uh, don't cheat by using stir length. So this is what I uh, figured out seems to work in here. It's stir view using the words data set, starts with any character, and then there's any character in between, and then any character, and then ends. So it's exactly three characters long, and it'll just be, that's that's what it'll match. Seven letters or more, I didn't do that one. Um, there's some exercises in here that I didn't complete. I finished most of them, but I didn't do this one. I think it, I was just kind of running into some, some issues with it. Um, I also noticed a lot of these exercises, um, I couldn't figure out from the previous material that we just learned in the in that section how to answer it. But then I went further on in the in the chapter, and then I found out that you the answers are later on. So if anybody wants to kind of go back on their on their own and figure this stuff out, um, obviously feel feel free. So this is just talking about leap uh, using. Let's see, since the list is long, oh yeah, this is the match argument. So this is just talking about why we use that match argument. So uh, the next section is character classes and alternatives. So there's a number of special patterns that match more than one character. And I gotta move my little window here so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Um, and some of those special patterns are Oh, okay, Daniel just posted the, the book that solves the exercises. That is very handy, thank you. Um, backslash D matches any digit, backslash S matches any white space, like a, a tab, a space, or a new line. Letters in square brackets will match any, for this example, it'll match A or B or C. And then when you have the caret inside the square brackets, it does not act as an anchor, but it means it matches it anything except A, B, or C. So it has the caret has a different meaning when it's inside of square brackets, and it means except, anything except. And remember to create the regular expressions containing the backslash D or backslash S, you need to escape it for the string. So it'll be two backslashes when it's written in the string. So we'll use character classes containing, um, oh, we can use character classes containing a single character as a nice alternative to backslash escapes when you wanna include a single special character in a regular expression. So many people find this more readable. Uh, it was kind of nice, although this one would be fairly simple because it would just be two backslashes. Um, this is just a nice example. So instead of, so here, this is the vector that is our input. And then this is the regular expression string that we're trying to match. We could have just written this as uh, backslash backslash if we wanna search for a literal dot, or since it's just a single character, we uh, can put it inside these square brackets and it acts the same way as using backslashes. So here, this is what it, this is what it returns. And this here is another, example of that same thing. We're searching for our search term here is any character. So that has its special meaning. The dot is not literal. It has its special meaning. Meaning, So it means any character. And then I'll search for a literal asterisk and then the letter C. Same thing here. This is searching for A and a literal space. And that's what it matches right here. So this works for most, but not all. Regex meta characters. Meta characters. I <laughs> I learned. I was like, wait, what's that word? It's the same. It means special character. It's the same same thing. So uh, this works for most, but not all special characters. Um, meaning it works for. Okay, it works for these ones. You can put these characters, these special characters, inside of the square brackets, and they will will work you don't have to put the backslashes in front of them. 
But unfortunately, a few characters do have a special meaning even when they're inside the character class, the square, square brackets, and must be handled with a backslash, with backslash escapes. So that's like we just talked about, the caret inside. Uh, this means except, everything except. So that's one of the special characters that we have to use backslashes for. Also the left uh, square bracket, the backslash and the hyphen. We have to use backslash escapes for those. So you can also use alternation to pick between one or more alternative patterns. And this, uh, this was a little confusing, but if precedence ever gets, gets confusing, use parentheses to make it clear what we want. So here we're searching for uh, G, R, E, or A, and then Y. So it matches both of these. I tried taking the parentheses out and what it will do if those parentheses are not there, it'll match G, R, E, or A, Y. So it only matches this first, it'll match G, R, E, and then it'll match A, Y. So this, these parentheses set the precedence, meaning that it can be either one of those and it'll match the entire word. So uh, for the exercises, create regular expressions to find all words that start with a vowel. So here we're using our, our caret anchor and we're using the square brackets with the letters inside, meaning it's any or, A or E or I or O or U. It will match any of those at the beginning of a string. Uh, we're using a regular expression to find words that only contain consonants. So we're matching not vowels. So there's a little character in here that we'll learn about a little bit later. But for now, this is the, um, this is the regular expression that works. So we're, we're anchoring this whole statement here to the beginning and the end. Um, so, but, and this is the accept. So we want, us, we want it to pick a word, since it's not a whole sentence, it's just a word that is, contains anything except A or E or I or O or U. This is a repetition special character, meaning this, is, it, this pattern is iterated one or more times. We'll learn about that in a minute and then it is the end of the word. So this is just basically finding everything that um, contain, every word that contains only consonants, which uh, it's not, not too many. Out of that whole list, this is all of them. So, and I just made a note here, the plus is added because we need to, this pattern to iterate one or more times, but we'll learn more about that. Uh, we want, uh, here we're trying to match words that end with ed, but not with eed. And I'm sure, so for all of these, there's, I'm sure there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, and I don't even know, I don't think my ways are necessarily the best ways, especially since I'm just learning all of this. This is just the way that I, that seemed to work, that I wrote and it, and it worked. So um, I'd be interested in checking out that book that Daniel posted there, just so um, I can kind of see how my solutions compare to the, uh, to other people's solutions. So we're doing anything except E and then E, D, um, so it's anything except, yes, anything except E, and then E and D anchored to the end. <laughs> Sorry, I did this a couple, I did this like two weeks ago, so I'm trying to re-remember it. But uh, so that will end anything that, oh, cool. Mary Elena said uh, the book has the same solution. So great, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good to know. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm after this, after today, I'm gonna check that book because there's a lot of these where I'm like, I'm not sure if that's right. But, um... <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, it's great. I mean, uh, I, I, it's a weird thing to ask, like a word that ends with ED, but not with ED. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Kind of confusing. <laughs> They did a good job with these exercises because they're tricky. They're not, they're not throwing softballs. Like these aren't really easy. There's some of them where you're kind of like, oh, that sounds easy. And then you start working it out and you're like, wait, this is, it's, they're, they're kind of tricky. So it's, it's, uh, it's good to know some of them are <laughs> pretty difficult. So it's good to know that I, I got that one right at least. 
Story, so, story, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this seemed to work. So here we, it matched um, matched any words that ended with ed, but not eed. Uh, so this is we're trying to match a word that ends with ing or ise. So here we're just using the or operator and the anchors. So we're this it ends with this or this. And that came out, uh, that worked out, but it was just a long list, so I didn't include in here. Uh, empirically verify the rule I before E. <laughs> this is one of the tricky ones. I was like, what? But this, uh, this seemed to work. Um, empirically verify the rule I before E except after C. So this is searching for, um, and we want it, we don't necessarily want this anchored. We're looking for it anywhere in the word. So we're looking for I, something it's I, E, or C, E, I. So this is basically trying to prove that this, uh, that this, we see words that match this, which it seemed to be, um, it seemed to be true, but there are words like science that don't abide by this rule. And it did match those, it matched the word science. And there's a couple other where it was like S-C-I-E, but that's kind of um, the ones that it didn't match. Uh, is Q always followed by U? This was, I did Q-U or Q any character or Q at the end. And according to this match, at least with this group of words that we're working with, it seems that yes, Q, U always does come after Q. So that seemed to work. And write a regular expression that matches a word if it's probably written in British English, not American English. I didn't understand this question at first and then I had to come back to it later and I understood. So generally in British English, there is a O, it's O-U-R instead of O. So I was matching words that just end in O-U-R and it seemed to work. There's a couple that obviously like for an hour, but color, favor and labor all are uh, in British English. And then create a regular expression that will match a telephone number as it's commonly written in, in your country. So I'm in the US and we are three digits, hyphen, three digits, hyphen, four digits. This looks ridiculous. <laughs> this is a huge, a huge regular expression, but I, uh, I, there's easier ways to do this. And we'll see an example of that a little bit later on, but this works. So we're searching for any digit, any digit, any digit, hyphen, and then just that pattern. And we have to double escape every uh, backslash D. So uh, into repetition. So controlling how many times a pattern iterates is the next sequence of control. And this can be accomplished with the following operators. The question mark means that the pattern will iterate zero or one time, plus sign one or more times, and the asterisk is zero or more times. So in this example here, we're using taking this string and we're searching for the pattern where there is a C and then there is another C repeated zero or one times. So it'll match here. So here's our first C and then another C repeated zero or one times. So this does not match this third C because we use the question mark, which means zero or one. Here we're searching for a C and then another C repeated one or more times. So that's why it matches here. Here's our first C and then we have another C and it's repeated one or more times. So it's repeated once. If there was more C's, it would just keep matching those C's. And we kind of see that in this example here. So here we're searching for a C, then an L or an X, and this order doesn't matter. It can be X, L, you can list it either way. It'll search for either an L or an X repeated one or more times. In this repetition, this special character, the plus sign, is attached to this or right here. So it's not necessarily attached to the C, it's just attached to the L or the X. So the L or the X can repeat one or more times. So this is what it matches here. Here's our C, and then here is an L or an X. So it matches both of them. And then that X repeats two more times. And it, with this, it's just one or more. So it 
matches all of those X's. And then it stops at the V because we don't have anything about a V in here. So just kind of what I was mentioned a minute ago, the precedence of the operators is really high, which means that we'll most of the time need to use parentheses like uh, banana. So if we didn't have the parentheses here, it would just match a bunch of A's because it's locked, it, it, it basically locks itself to the character that it's right next to. So here we can see uh, with this vector that we're trying to match um, NA repeated however many times with the A repeated however many times, and it'll only match the first NA here, not the second NA. And basically because it's not, there's nothing in here that's N-A-A-A-A, it only matches N-A. And it's stir view, not stir view all, so we're only matching the first instance of that, we're not matching the second one. And there's no other N-A's here. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> misleading, not, not N-A like a, a not applicable or a missing value, but like N-A, it, it, the pattern N-A. So uh, this one matches any repetition of N and A. So this will match N, A, N, A here. So this one would only match N, A, 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 A. This one matches N, A, N, A, N, A. So since we have that in the parentheses there. Uh, you can also, this is where the phone number one would come in handy. You can also specify that to go away. There we go. Um, the number of matches exactly. So N means you want to match exactly N, whatever that number is. N apostrophe, N comma is N or more, um, comma M at most M, and N comma M between N and M. So here we want to match C exactly two times. Pretty straightforward, matches C twice. Here we want to match C two or more times. So it does uh, matches three C's right here. Here we want to match C between two and three times. So it matches all three C's. So by default, you'll notice that um, these form, these search forms are uh, what they call greedy, which means it matches the longest string possible. So it matches three instead of two, it goes with three. To make them lazy, meaning they search for the shortest string, you can add a question mark at the end. So this question mark means that it's only gonna search for um, the lower of the two, which is two, and then match those right there. Uh, and then this is the same, the same. So here we're searching for a C and then an L or an X repeated one or more. Oh, repeated one or more times and then there's the question mark. So that's why it just does the C and the L because that's the minimum match that you can get out of this. The maximum match would be right through um, all the X's. So we can describe the equivalence of, of these operators in MN form. So the question mark means uh, is the operator that is the repetition operator, that means zero or one, repeated zero or one times, and that's equivalent to this meaning at least zero times, but at most one time. The plus sign is equivalent to, means it's repeated one or more times. So that's equivalent to one comma empty. And then the asterisk is equivalent to, uh, means that it's repeated zero or more times. So that's zero or more times. Uh, describe in words what these regular expressions match. Read, uh, read carefully, see if I'm using a regular expression or a string that defines a regular expression. So here's our first one. So this, to read it across, this regular expression matches a pattern that starts and ends with any character repeated zero or more times. So here is our start anchoring it to the beginning. And here is our, um, our dollar sign anchoring it to the end. And in between the beginning and the end, we want any character repeated zero or more times. So that's basically any word. And it's also every string too. So if this is a sentence, that is gonna match 
um, a white space as well, repeated however many times. So this, this pattern right here is just gonna match every string. So this one is going to match a string. So this is a string that defines a regular expression, whereas this is just a regular expression. There's no quotes around it. Uh, this is a string that defines a regular expression and it matches one or more characters contained in curly braces. So this one looks long, but really it's just escaping the curly braces. So we wanna use the curly brace. We have a double escape and we wanna use that literally and we wanna use that literally. And then within those curly braces, we're searching for any character repeated one or more times. So it's just anything within a curly brace. This uh, is a regular expression that matches, matches any pattern of digits that are in the four hyphen two hyphen two format. So um, this is where I could have written my example above, my uh, the phone number example a lot easier where it's any digit repeated four times and then the hyphen any digit repeated two times hyphen, any digit two times. And then I kind of tested this out and it was weird, but um, I said, oddly, the regular expression where I'm escaping one, the regular expression, not the string. I mean, the string, there would be two escapes and all these. But if I put a backslash, if I escape the hyphen, it matches the same exact thing. So because when I read this, I thought it was weird because the hyphen is a special character. So I was thinking, don't we need to escape that? but um, apparently not because it's the same either way. So I wasn't really sure what was going on there, but it works either way in that case. So this next one um, is a string that defines a regular expression because it has the uh, quotations and it matches any pattern of exactly four backslashes in a row. So to test this, I had to use eight backslashes in a string. So this is basically, um, we go back to, Last week, we learned that four, when it's in a string, four backslashes means one literal backslash. So this is one, technically one literal backslash repeated four times. So that was kind of a little tricky one. Uh, this is a regular expression that finds a word that all words that start with three consonants. So this is um, start with and not vowels repeated three times. Yeah, okay. Um, the next one is uh, find words that have three or more vowels in a row. So here is our vowels, or sorry, any any of these vowels at least three times, but maybe more. Where are my cats jumping up on here? Um, and then have two or more vowel consonant pairs in a row. So this is searching for a vowel, any vowel, and then any consonant repeated at least two times. So it'll have to be this first, then this repeated at least two times or more. And then this is a little link here. I'll put this in the uh, chat box. This was kind of cool. I wasn't able to, I love uh, crosswords. <laughs> and let's see. Um, I checked this out and I didn't quite, I could, couldn't quite put the time into it that I needed to, but I uh, didn't quite wrap my head around it, but it looked like it was, it looked like it could have been a fun, a fun thing to do. It's like a, reg, a regex crossword, but it looks like they have quite a few different ones in there. So if anybody, if you guys want to check that out, it looks like it could be fun. <laughs> uh, so grouping and back references, parentheses are also used <laughs> Yeah, no problem. I was I was really excited when I saw that because I was like, oh, I, I am a crossword nerd. I'll stay up at night. Instead of reading like social media, I had a crossword <laughs> app and I just sit in bed and like do crosswords and keep myself up at night doing crosswords. I was really excited when I saw that. <laughs> it's very cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Um, so for grouping and back references, parentheses can also create a numbered capturing group. Um, this was a little confusing, but hopefully it's clear um, when we get by the time we get to the end of that. And some of you may already know about this. But uh, so a capturing group, which is what parentheses, another function of parentheses, we can create a capturing group. They store um, the part of the string matched by the part of the regular expression inside the parentheses. 
and then you can refer to this same text as previously matched by a capturing group with uh, with back references. So that sounds really confusing. And this honestly took me, I had to come back to this um, a few different times. And then I had a real aha moment with this and I it became clear and I figured it out. I was like, oh, it was such a relief because I was really struggling with this. But anyway, here it is. So here we're trying to match. This is our string that represents the regular expression that we're trying to match. This is our capture group right here. Um, and that means within that group, we're searching for a pair. So it's any character and then any character. And then this is our back reference. So that means we're searching for any words that have a pair of letters and then have a second pair, a repeated pair of those same two letters, whatever they are. So here it's gonna match A-N, A-N. So essentially this A-N, we can say this is an A and this is an N and then it's matching it right here. So the numbered part of this capturing group is just this. There's only one in here, so this is number one. In some following examples, we'll see where there's multiple capturing groups, but this one has only one, so we're back referencing it, we're calling it number one. So this matches any pair repeated once. So A-N-A-N, C-O-C-O, C-U-C-U, et cetera. Um, you can use the data command uh, in the console to see a list of all the data sets in base R, as well as those included in your packages. Oh, okay, this is just saying that fruits or fruit is a data set that's included in string R. So right here, that's the data we use for that. So for the exercises, describe in words what each of these expressions will match. So this is just the regular expression. Notice we only have one backslash there and we have no quotation marks. So it's not a string that represents a regular expression. It's just the regular expression. We're searching for any character and then that same character, whatever it is, one more time and then another time. So it's basically, this is searching for any character three times in a row. This is a string with the quotation marks. So we have to double escape these back references. So here's a case like I was talking about a minute ago where there's more than one capture group. So we created this capture group, which is any character, and then this capture group, which is any character. So this is number one. This is capture group one, which we're re gonna reference here. And this is capture group two. If we had another one, that would be capture group three. They're just numbered from left to right. And then we're back referencing this. So now we basically wanna have any character, then any character, then the second character, and then this first character. So that matches things like, this is one word here, afternoon, but it only matches the noon part. So it's basically one, two, two, one, and then difficult also. So it matches this part of difficult. So the IFFI, this is one, two, two, one, if that's making sense. Um, here, this matches any pair repeated once. Uh, this matches any words that contain one letter repeated in three different places. So this is, this is your capture group right here. So we want that and then any character. And then we want that character from our first capture group repeated. And then we want any character and then we want that character from our first capture group again repeated. So it matches uh, a, uh, any word that has a letter repeated in three places. So um, like the, the letter, um, the word 11 has three different E's in it in three different places. So it would match that. So this is a little bit more confusing, but it gets the idea across this regular expression. The best way to say it was, I just said what it matches, which is paragraph. So here we have, uh, Capture group one, capture group two, capture group three with any character in there. And then any character repeated zero or more times. And then we want it to be three, two, one. So we want letters one, two, three, anything in between, and then letters three, two, one. So in this example, those first three letters would be P-A-R. So it'd be 
P A R anything R A P. So that would match things like paragraph. And this really, <laughs> this had, like this had me, this had my, my brain in knots. I was, I would, could not understand this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like who thought of that example? That's what we were talking about. Like, I mean, yeah, under with, what circumstances did one come up with exactly. that? <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Trying to throw us a curveball is what it is. Like they're just trying to make it, to make it confusing. But it's yeah, but, a, but you explained it very like clear. I mean, I understand why that happened, but I was like, wait, what is it saying exactly? <laughs> right, right, exactly. When would that ever come into play? Except for in paragraph, you know, unless you're searching for the word paragraph. But uh -huh. um, yeah, so I'm glad it's coming across clear because this really uh, had me quite confused for a while. And then when I realized it, it was like the skies opened up. I was like, that's it. I finally, for some reason, all of a sudden it made sense. So I'm glad I'm able to explain it. Um, so uh, construct regular expressions to match words that start and end with the same character. Um, this is, this would do that. Starts and ends with a uh, capture group and then any character repeated um, zero or more times and then that capture, capture group. So it starts and ends with the same thing. Uh, contained a repeated pair of letters like church repeat. So the CH would be repeated twice. So here's a pair with anything in between repeated zero or more times and then that same pair repeated. And then notice there's no anchors. So this can be anywhere in the word. Uh, and then contains one letter repeated in at least three places. And we looked at, at that up above. So the word 11 is three E's. So uh, that's, it would be any character in a capture group, uh, any character repeated zero more times, uh, capture group one, any character zero more times, and then capture group one, any character three more times, or sorry, zero or more times. So <laughs> here's where we were supposed to end last week. <laughs> So that just goes to show that this chapter, there's a, there's a lot, as in a lot of the other chapters too, there's just a lot of information in here. And uh, I want to make sure that's kind of getting explained well. So here's tools in this section. We'll learn a wide array of string R functions that let you determine which strings match a pattern, find the positions of the matches, extract the content of the matches, replace matches with new values, and split a string based on the matches. So a word of caution before we continue, because regular expressions are so powerful, it's easy to try and solve every problem with a single, single regular expression. Um, there was a huge long regular expression in here that was, it was, it was like over a hundred lines long and it was just a single <laughs> regular expression. And I took that out of here, but that's just kind of a, to show that it's not a regular expression isn't the end all, uh, pro problem solver. It, there's other there's other ways to do it apparently. So um, this is where it says excluded unbelievably long expression from the presentation. So instead of creating one complex regular expression like this was, it's often easier to write a series of simpler regular expressions. Uh, we can break them down so to smaller manageable trunk chunks. And it said to use a visual drawing to help if it helps to write out your expression. So the point is, don't start from difficulty first. So with all that being said, on to detecting matches with stir detect. To determine if a character vector matches a pattern, we can use stir detect, and it returns a logical vector, the same length as the input. So here, if we're searching for an E, it just says, yes, there's an E in the first one. No, there's no E in the second one. And yes, there is an E in the third string. So since it's um, the Boolean operator or, or the Boolean re return is true, false, and which equates to one and zero. That means we can use functions like sum and mean on them, which is kind of handy. So here we can detect, use stir detect to see how many words start with the letter T and take a sum of that. So they're 65. And that makes, a, makes the function handy. Uh, we can use mean to find proportions. So what proportion of common words from the words data set end with a vowel? 
We can use stir detect and then end anchor that to the end with any vowel and take the mean of that right there. And when you create a large, when you create large logical conditions, you may also be able to break them down to simpler search terms and then combine them together. So always try to start simple. So this is an example of these two do the same exact thing. These two lines of code do the same thing, but they're just written differently. So this one essentially is finding all words that contain at least one vowel and then negating that. So we're just doing a regular stir detect function call here where uh, we want anything that contains any vowel at least once, and then we're just negating it with the uh, negate operator there. And then here we're finding, this will give us the same output, but the code is more confusing. We're using stir detect, and then this is our, uh, this is our pattern match that we're searching for. So this is a lot more, just not a lot more, but this, this first one is just easier to read and we get the same result. So a common use of stir detect is to select the elements that match a pattern. And you can do this with logical subsetting or with the convenient stir subset wrapper. So here's an example of um, finding a pattern match using logical subsetting. So normally this stir detect would return a true false, but since we are subsetting it, I don't know a ton about this, uh, about logical subsetting. I mean, I can kind of deduce what they're talking about here, but um, we're pulling, we're using this function that would normally return a logical and we're subsetting it inside of this words, um, words group. So, and then we're trying to pull every word that ends with an X. So it pulls out the words instead of a true false. Instead of doing that to get the same result, we can use the stir subset wrapper and that will be a simpler code to put in and we get the same result. So I actually, we have used, we use this quite a bit uh, throughout the rest of the presentation, this stir subset, a lot more than I, we used stir detect. Uh, so this is just kind of reiterating that to make, to make stir detect return the actual value instead of a vector of true false, we need to use a logical subsetting or the stir subset wrapper. And then using the stir subset subset wrapper makes for simpler code. Typically, however, your strings will be in one column of a data frame and you'll want to use filter instead. So this is kind of a more real world example of how you would actually be coming across this. So in this example, we are uh, have a tibble with two columns, a word column, which is just the words, and then a like an index column, basically, that's just a number numbered list of the words in sequence. We're assigning that to a data frame, a DF variable, and then from that DF variable, we're filtering out the, um, using the stir detect function, all the words that end in X, and then it'll return it in um, this data frame. So it's a little more handy to look at. Um, and then this right here is just telling us where in the list these, these letters or these words appear. So a variation on stir detect is stir count. So rather than a simple yes or no, it tells you how many matches there are in a string. So if you use a stir count function and they're looking for A, we see that the A appears once in the first string, three times in the second string here, and then once in the last string of pair. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, and since with the count function, we can use mean and sum since we're getting a numeric return here. So this is on average, how many vowels are there per word? We can use stir count words, our vowel expression here and take the mean of that. So that'll just say there's on average 1.99 vowels per word. So since that uh, returns a count, it's natural to use stir count with mutate. And as we recall from our dplyr lesson, uh, mutate adds a column to a data frame and you can name that column. So uh, with this data frame, we're using the same df and then we are using the mutate function and we are adding a vowels column and a consonants column. And we're just using that stir count function here to get the uh, to get the count 
of vowels and consonants. And then we can see it in the return data frame down here um, where we have our vowels column and our consonants column. Okay, so note that the matches never overlap. Um, for example, in, uh, I don't know if this is a, it must be a word because I guess it's in words. I don't know. Abba, baba. <laughs> how many times the pattern will match? How many times will it match the pattern A, B, A? In a regular expression, it'll be twice, not three times. So if we're looking, it'll, it'll match this A, B, A and this A, B, A. It won't match this middle A, B, A because that would mean overlap. So it's just not the way that um, the pattern matches work with, um, with stir count. So um, yeah, and the stir view all is just showing exactly what's happening here. So it matches the first and then the second, but not the middle one. So uh, note that stir view all, as we'll shortly le learn, many string R functions come in pairs. Uh, one function works with a single match and the other works with all matches. And I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier on. The second function um, that matches all of the matches within each string will have the suffix underscore all. So we'll see that later on too. So there's stir view, then there's stir view all, there's stir detect, there's stir detect all. There's, there's a lot of uh, different, different functions that will use that underscore all suffix. Uh, so 953, um, for each of the following challenges, try to solve it by using a, both a single regular expression and a combination of multiple stir detect calls. I wasn't really sure about, I'm gonna check the, the book for the solutions for this one, just because I wasn't really sure of the differences because they both seemed just as, um, just as easy, but this is what I put. So to find all words that start or end with an X, I used uh, the stir view to match those words. Uh, starts, start or end with an X. So this is start with an X or end with an X, pretty straightforward. I uh, used to stir subset here with words to start with an X or end with an X. It looks like I forgot to write a, there should be a quotation right there that I forgot to write a double quote. Um, and then I did the stir detect words that don't contain an X and that returns zero. So that just verified these two above outputs, if that makes sense. Um, find all words that start with a vowel and end with a consonant. So from that words data set, start with a vowel. And then there's any, any character repeated zero or more times and then end with anything that's not a vowel. So ends with a consonant. Um, in these last two, I did not answer. Uh, if I, are there any words that contain at least one of each different vowel? I were, I'm gonna check the book on that because I worked on it for a little too long and wasn't able to figure it out. And then I was like, I just gotta move along here. So I didn't put an answer for that one. And then uh, what word has the highest number of values? So that would be a kind of a proportion. Um, we, I would assume we would use the mean function uh, wrapped around the, um, stir count function to find proportions. So we're 55, we got five minutes left. I'll go into extract matches here. So uh, we use stir extract function to extract the actual text of a match. Whereas stir, stir detect returns a logical vector, stir extract returns the actual text of the match. And we'll be using the Harvard sentences data set for, for this, which is part of um, the string R. I believe it's a string R package. It's either string R or base, but um, you just type in sentences and you'll get access to that. So it's part, okay, part of the string R package. And it's a collection of uh, sample character vectors for practicing string manipulations. It is 720, uh, length 720, and it's just 720 fairly simple sentences that we'll be working with. So notice this is different because we're not working with just one word anymore. Um, we're working with a single string, but with multiple words inside, multiple characters and multiple words inside the strings. So imagine that we want to find um, all sentences that contain a color. So first we'll create a vector of the color names, which we do right here in a single or in multiple strings. 
all within a vector. And then we'll turn that into a single regular expression. So we'll use um, the stir C function, which we learned about last week. And we'll also put this collapse argument in there. We'll collapse it with the or operator. So using this collapses it, this whole thing right here turns it into a regular expression. So this now we have this variable called color match that is the, the, the pattern match that we're searching for. So then we'll select the sentences that contain a color. So we'll use stir subset for that. Stir subset returns the entire sentence that, that contains a match. And then we'll extract the actual text of the match, which would be the actual color to find out which one it is. So here is um, stir extract from the has color uh, variable. We'll extract that actual color match. So here it extracted blue, blue, red, red, uh, red, blue. So also we'll note that uh, stir extract only extracts the first match. Um, stir view. Oh, okay. So this only extracts the first match in each sentence. So if a sentence contains two colors, it's only pulling the first color. So here to put that as an example, we are matching the colors that have a count or matching the sentences that have more than one color in, in the sentence. And we do that by using stir count. Um, that have the color match that's greater than one, meaning the colors rep uh, repeat more than at least, repeat once at least in each sentence. So, and now if we use the stir view all, or sorry, if we use stir extract and we're pulling the colors, it's just pulling the first. So it's just pulling blue, green, and orange. So it's pulling blue, blue green, and orange. It's not pulling these second ones. So in order to get all of the matches, we use stir extract all. There's that underscore all that we talked about. So stir extract all returns it in this sort of list uh, scenario here. So it'll be blue, red, green, red, orange, red. And that's, these are the matches here, blue, red, green, red, orange, red. Even though this isn't a color, we'll see that in a minute, but how to separate that out. But it did pick up that pattern of R-E-D. Um, so it looks like we have one minute left. Um, we could probably, I guess, end it, end it here, um, and then pick yeah. up if we if we wanted to, to do it again next week. This is just a yeah. jam-packed chapter, but we can pick it up with um, we can pick it up with group matches because this is kind of talking about yeah. this with the colors here. So we can uh, pick it up with group matches next week and then try to wrap it up next week if that's if that's okay. Yeah, I think that's fine. So I think we could probably finish up with two sub chapter. Then the rest, so other types of pattern, other uses of regular expressions and string I. I mm -hmm. think we could probably just read that on our own. Okay. So maybe, maybe, maybe we start next class ending up with twos, then I'll continue with factors. Is that fine? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that sounds Perfect. good. Perfect. Yeah, because that's what it seems like when I was looking over the chapter here. It seems like the tools, the end of tools is kind of the, the most important, or it seems like the most yeah. important. And then the rest of it, yeah, like you were saying, can be gone over on, on your own. But, no problem. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Sharon. I think this, I, is, this is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was very helpful. Thank you very much. Good. All right. Well, thank you. I'll see you guys next week. Hi, right, Cheers. Bye. Have a nice uh, weekend. <laughs> you too. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Stop share.